Sarah and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this tail end race review for the, I'm not going to say what they actually call it because I don't know how to say it, um, but for the Imola GP. Honestly, at the start of that race, I was like, oh my God, this is literally going to be so boring, but what a race we actually got in the end. So much happened in the last like 20 laps. I have no idea what went on, but in today's video, I'm just going to discuss all the key points that I picked up. So before I get into this video, if you do enjoy it, please give it a big thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe down below. Um, but yeah, first, uh, what should I even talk about first? I don't even know what to talk about. And um, first I'm gonna talk about some retirements. And um, the first one I'm gonna talk about is Pierre Gasly. Okay, so Pierre was the first one to retire. He actually had issues at the start of the race as we saw. Um, they were like checking the engine. Obviously you can't really do much when you're literally on the grid. Um, I kind of knew there was gonna be an issue, but I kind of hoped that there wasn't. When they said power unit, I was like, oh my God. I was hoping maybe there was just a sensory issue that they could fix. But he then went and he started. He had an amazing start. He was actually gonna overtake Lewis if it wasn't for them literally going three wide with Max and then him having to dip out of it and then getting overtaken by Daniel, Daniel Ricciardo. But his start was amazing. So I thought, oh, you know, maybe we're okay. Maybe the engine's okay. And then lap nine, we got the radio message saying, Pierre, we're gonna have to retire. We've got an issue. I think they later on said it was a coolant issue. Um, but I think it was inevitable that the engine probably would have blown up throughout the race anyway. So I can completely get why they, um, retired him because it would have happened anyway but it's just so sad he was running p5 like this would have done so much for his constructors as well because i'm following that midfield battle a lot and this would have done bits for it and unfortunately he retired i'm so upset i'm actually upset i nearly cried again i nearly cried so next i'm going to talk about the fight we had between daniel kavia and alex albon now as we know alex albon seems to be fighting you know people that maybe he shouldn't be fighting i.e he should be higher up but he was having a fight with Danny Fia. I don't know what place it was for. Like somewhere at the back end of the points. And it was a really good battle. Like Danny Kvyat was on fire today. Like Danny Kvyat was absolutely on fire. Um, and he was behind Alex Albon. Alex was trying to chase Charles. That's it. Alex was trying to chase Charles to, you know, get up the top, up to the top three. But no, Danny Kvyat was just coming behind him like a rocket, like a, literally like a torpedo. But he was actually, you know, well behaved, making some good moves. And they just had such a good battle. So I just wanted to pick up on that because it was a really good battle. I think Danny done some good moves and kept really close behind Alex. I think it was around like lap 17 or something. Daniel actually went for it. I think it's down to turn two and they actually touched each other. And I think he nearly broke his um, end plate, but he didn't. But they got that close in the race. But it was a good battle. I really enjoyed watching it. It's nice to see Danny Kvyat up there. I feel like he hasn't really shown what he's about for quite a long time now. Obviously, it's probably too late. Well, it's definitely too late for, to retain his seat next year. But nevertheless, he had some great battles today. And he probably was my driver of the day. I think I actually voted for Daniel Ricciardo because I wasn't sure what to do. But I think it should be Danny Kvyat. I think he had an amazing day. Now, obviously, the bit that kicked it off was in the middle of the race, and that was lap 30 when Esteban Ocon had his little issue. It was a shame, but then it kicked everything out and everything out to play. This was a point where Lewis Hamilton was leading and he was building a gap. Bear in mind, he was building this massive gap anyway to Valtteri Bottas. I know he had a bit of debris stuck in his car and I also know he had a bit of damage, but nevertheless, he was, I think he was gaining Lewis like a second per lap. Like Valtteri was really, really slow. So I think he'd built like a 28 and a half second gap, which was enough for a pit stop. The pit stop is like 27 seconds. But then the virtual safety car comes out, thanks to Esteban, and Lewis goes straight in the pits. Obviously, you're gonna gain, I think you're gonna gain like 10 seconds in the pit stop and what you normally would if it was normal racing. And off he goes. He's literally got a free pit stop there and then. And it just sums up what happens for Valtteri Bottas every single weekend. Like every single time, it just falls into play for Lewis. And it's not a bad thing at all because even regardless of this virtual safety car, I don't think Valtteri would have kept the place because Lewis was really really a lot faster than him but it's just the fact that this virtual safety car came out and he said he could comfortably pit it was just I've, i don't know if to feel bad for bottas i don't know if to feel upset for him i don't know if to laugh at him i just it just happens every weekend and another thing i think i should pick up on because i bet nobody else who does race reviews is going to pick up on this and that is kevin magnuson's headaches i felt so bad for the man he's running last and he's saying every time he upshifts he gets a headache like that must really hurt like his head was hurting and his engineer was like look do you want to retire and he was like it's my job isn't it i've got to keep going like, oh my god bless him but then literally at the end of that lap he pitted and he retired and i mean there's no point like if he was running in the points he would have persevered but the fact he was literally p last i can completely see why he retired but oh it was funny when he was like well it's my job isn't it like i've got to keep going i felt bad for him because you know you don't want to see someone actually in physical pain but he retired and that kind of summed up Kevin Magnussen's weekend. There's so many points I could talk about, so I'm just gonna kind of go over the fact that what the hell happened to Verstappen's tire on lap 51? Like, oh my God, what happened? It just went. 
As soon as I saw him in the gravel there, I was like, well, he definitely hasn't done it himself because you wouldn't be beached there. Um, and the tire just went. Christine Horner said it might be debris, but I didn't see any debris on the track, but we didn't really get a good angle of it. So I don't know whether he ran over something or whether the tire just went. But if that tire just went, that would be very worrying because I just, those Pirelli tires shouldn't go like that, especially as it's a hard time, and especially as I don't think he'd like had it on for too long. It wasn't like he was completely, completely stringing out his stint. So don't know what's going on there. Very worrying. But at the end of the day, we did get a, you know, a different podium. So I'm not really complaining. And Max was okay. So that's the main thing. So then obviously because of that, we get a safety car. And I'm thinking this is good for George Russell. He's in P11 at the moment. You know, he could do something magical. He could get in the points. And then we just turned to George Russell like in this mess, in this Williams mess, the front wing is gone. The nose is gone. A wheel's off. And I look and I thought, oh my god, it must be Nicholas. And I feel so bad because it, it's not always Nicholas. So, oh, maybe it's Nicholas. And then they say George Russell. I'm like, what are you doing there? And I just, I had an instant feeling of, normally I'm like, oh, something's happened. Like nine times out of ten, something has happened to George for him to be like that. I was like, mm, something must have happened. No, no, he did just drop it. He really just dropped it trying to warm up his tyres. Oh my god. I'm going to cry. Look at my eyes. <laughs> to have that realisation that he would have got points and he didn't because of that mistake like George Russell doesn't make mistakes George Russell is like a Lewis Hamilton I said that in my previous video I will leave it here or in the description box or you can find it on my channel he doesn't make mistakes he rarely makes mistakes he's like Lewis Hamilton he really doesn't make these mistakes so when it happens it's very unusual it's very weird and especially to see a, an issue like this this is like the Baku incident with Roman Grosjean when his team were like I think Ericsson hit us like it was one of those like he just lost it once you went into the wall so unfortunately that happened and George Russell didn't finish and he also had a bit of a meme moment at the end of well when he was literally sitting on the floor whacking his leg because he was so upset and also I think we just need to give a quick mention to Lance Stroll literally running over his front jack man like I just, he just didn't stop did he and the front jack man went flying and then I feel like he like kept his roll going for way too long he just rolled over at the end it was really funny um but he was okay which was good you know that's the main bit he was okay he got back up again and I don't think he's broken any legs or anything like that but overall the race was really good actually in the end I really loved the last 20 laps and Mercedes are now seven time consistent executive constructors champions like that is that's incredible i i i really like mercedes you know i thank them a lot for getting me even getting into formula one they were the team that brought me into formula one they're the team that i have supported throughout the hybrid era and yeah they're just the team that i i really love and they they deserve it so much you know there's, there could be so much hate about mercedes like oh you know they they're always at the top they've got all the money they're all this they're all that but you can't deny how much effort and how good they are. So yeah, congratulations to Mercedes. Congratulations to Lewis and Valtteri. Congratulations to everybody at Bricksworth and Brackley and everybody out on the track for this seventh world championship because that's mega. Okay, so moving on to my predictions. Now I made predictions last weekend for this weekend. And yeah, let's see if I got any right. I don't even know if I did or not. I can't remember what I say. So I literally look at this. I'm like, oh, I said that. So for qualifying, I predicted that Lewis Hamilton was going to get pole position. Max Verstappen was going to be in P2 and Valtteri Bottas was going to be in in P3. I thought Max would split the Mercedes and he actually was quite close. Um, but it was actually Bottas in pole position. He'd done a really good lap. It was Lewis Hamilton in P2 and Max Verstappen in P3. Now for the race, I went basic and I said Lewis Hamilton would win, Valtteri Bottas would be P2 and Max Verstappen would be P3. And that probably was gonna happen. It probably was, even though Max was P2, I feel like Valtteri probably would have caught up. It was actually Lewis Hamilton in P1, Valtteri Bottas in P2 and Daniel Ricciardo in P3. For fastest lap, I said Lewis Hamilton. And it was Lewis Hamilton. I thought he'd do like the whole 26 points as he did. And to retire first, I said Danny Kvyat, but it was actually his teammate, Pierre Gasly. But we don't need to talk about it again. Okay, so moving on to two weeks time, which is the Turkish Grand Prix, which I am so excited for. Like I'm so excited for this. Like Turkey is my favorite country. Istanbul Park is meant to be a good track. I've never watched it live, but it looks amazing and I can't wait for it. So my predictions are for qualifying, it's gonna be Lewis Hamilton in P1. I've said Max Verstappen in P2 is gonna split the Mercedes and Valtteri Bottas in P3. For the race, I have gone with Lewis Hamilton's gonna win. I just don't know what else to say. Um, Max Verstappen is gonna be in P2 and Sergio Perez is gonna be in P3 because as we know, I didn't actually touch on it today, but Racing Point did pit him when they shouldn't have done. I actually filmed Backseat Driver this week as always for Veloce and I was like, why did they just pit Checo? He was in P3, now he's in P7 and you know, he missed out on a podium. So I'm hoping he has redemption in two weeks time. For fastest lap, I've said Lewis Hamilton. I don't know, I feel like I'm really saying anybody else at this point. And to retire first, I've said Sebastian Vettel. Don't know why something might happen so there we go that is it for today's video i hope you did enjoy it and i hope you enjoyed the grand prix if you did enjoy the video please give it a big thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to my channel down below and yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you again soon goodbye